All right. So you have just finished watching the very short, short video of abstracting everyday objects. It's pretty cool how he had taken the basketball and used it as a pattern to create this abstract concept on his wall. So what we're going to do today is we are going to abstract an object. Miss H, what is that? Well, <clears throat> I'm going to show you a version of this. Um, there are a few famous artists that as I am looking on my computer screen right now, just to get this name right, of course it'd be that one moment that I can't find what I'm looking for. There we go. Um, Van Dosberg, a very significant artist in abstract art where he would take something, an object, I turn this upside down. I'm going to keep explaining. You take an object and he would sketch it out as I've done here with this horse head. And then he would presume to create renditions of this horse head. He would render, uh oh, renditions, render. You heard that word and I asked you about that word on this lesson to render. Think about the first word that I used before I used the word render. Rendition. Render, as we've backed up into render from rendition, render is the root to rendition, okay? So we're going to render, meaning make different versions of, it's that simple. But hey, as I tell my kids all the time, art is not just about art. We're not just coloring and pacing. I feel so bad for anybody who thinks art is just about coloring and crayons and doing whatever. No, we're learning about math, we're learning about science, we learn about um, some higher order words in art. Renditions, remember that word, use it. So, my first rendering of this horse head here is I just did a quick simple sketch. Uh, it took me about maybe five minutes before I turned on the video screen. Now, if I was to do something similar to uh, what I believe uh, David had done in the video, and then if I was to even mimic the style, the style of um, Van Dosberg, I would now take this first rendering that I did and I would abstract it by beginning to create something that is not real. Now, we touched on this very briefly for some of us that are watching this right now um, in our some of our painting projects. Um, fourth and fifth graders, you just finished a huge project for me in painting. And the first thing I'd said about it is I didn't want it to be something real. Well, whether you knew it or not, I was actually leading you into the art of abstract. And even though we didn't get to do it in class for the rest of the year, studying that through clay or through some other uh, techniques in art, we can still learn about it right here. So right now what I'm doing, this is just a quick sketch. It's not my best. I didn't practice before I got here. So we're taking what we can get. But right now what I've done is I have rendered another version of this horse set here. Okay, so I tried to make it look somewhat similar in its composition, um, putting the eye in the same place, nose, mouth, same posture in the head, okay? But now if I was to take it one step further, I'm just gonna add a little bit of detail here because my next one is gonna very closely resemble the style of uh, Van Dusburg is now what I'm gonna do is I am going to abstract this one bit further. So what abstract asks us to do is it asks us to step outside of our normal visualization of the world around us and for some of us, we may choose to see shapes like I am doing here. 
Uh, if you remember third, fourth, fifth grade, when we did the face exercise, and I'm going to do a quick little demonstration over here. The first thing that that artist had asked us to do was start with the circle. She asked us to draw a line down the middle, find the middle of that line, and then third way through. And then she began to ask us to piece together the face. What she was asking us to do is to see the face in its geometric shapes. She was asking us to cut it in halves, thirds. Oh my goodness. If I was to say this lesson back out loud and you weren't in the middle of it without your erasers and you're huffing and puffing, mad that you made a mistake, you might hear all the ways that she had referred to this face drawing that we did earlier in the year in its mathematical terms. Putting lines halfway, putting lines a third, asking us to see an object in its proportions. Oh, remember it was the proportions of the face was the name of the exercise. Talked about the spatial awareness between the nose, how the inside of the eye comes out to the corner, the size of the nostril, how the, uh, middle of the iris then comes down here and that's the corner of the face it's not always the case but it's a great best guess okay so she had asked us to see the face in its proportions in its shapes in its lines okay well what we're doing with abstract is kind of the same is now we're seeing our shapes, our everyday shapes, maybe in their geometric uh, shapes. So the horse here, seeing the horse in its, its head in the circles. I'm seeing the geometric shapes of its ear in triangles. Uh, using these sharper kind of rigid triangles for the hair, okay? And just very quickly, I've done this because I'm going to make this a short video, but I've rendered this horse. First here, I've rendered it in somewhat of a realistic sketch, not so much, but just doing something very quick and basic. Then over here, I've rendered it again. I've taken away a lot of this pencil detail and I'm beginning to see it in some of its just singular lines, just giving lines some movement giving some uh, shapes like the hair, now giving a more concrete look. The shapes are not suggested here as my sketch lines do, but now I'm giving them concrete lines where they come together and I can quickly see where a line starts, stops, where it meets another line, where it curves. I can see the shape and I can define it better if I was to talk about what I'm seeing here. But now here, I am beginning to see just the shapes, okay? Now you may choose to do something similar as I've done here, minus this face, okay? So these are my three renderings, my three renditions of the horse head, okay? Now David uh, chose to demonstrate the basketball You've got some examples of pictures that show some Van Dusburg on how he would take something like I've done, a very similar um, sketch pattern, rendition one, rendition two, rendition three, okay? I want you to find an everyday object, okay? It could be something as simple as a flower, right? Maybe I've got this beautiful sunflower here that I'm gonna just quickly sketch out, maybe it looks a little more like a daisy. Okay, I'm being very quick in this. I'm not going for anything that will win any, uh, win any artistic awards, okay? So I've got this flower here. Maybe I add some shadows, highlights, what not have you. But now I may come over here and I just see the flower in its shapes. Okay, and maybe my third rendering of it is I only see lines, a suggestion of lines, okay? Maybe. 
I'm not telling you how to do this. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Parents, have some fun. Do it with your kids. Find an everyday object that you both like and each of you render it three different ways and then show each other at the end. Don't do it next to each other, okay? It'd be cool to compare your notes. Parents, I'd love to see if you did this exercise with your kids. I would love to see that, okay? And a flip, a flip, yep. Come back up here, okay? So I want you to find an everyday object and I want you to abstract it. You're gonna create three renditions of that object. I want you to seek to make your final rendition, your third one, similar to how I did on here, where, oops, hi Ben. Similar to how I made the horse head, not realistic here, you can, you see the suggestion that it's a horse head, but there's nothing realistic about this. That's the point of abstract, okay? It's not meant to be something that tries to mimic the world around it, but rather it seeks to describe the world around it in unrealistic terms. It's a way to express, very expressionistic, but a way to express emotions, way to express an idea. So this might be my idea of a horse head, but you could have a totally different idea. Okay, so I want you to create your renderings. You can add color to them. You don't have to, you can do whatever you wanna do, okay? If you still have some of your egg tempera, hello, you could use it here um, because mine will be in uh, little plastic cases with a lid. So I'm gonna reuse it because I don't throw anything away, okay? Responsible artistry. So I want you to uh, create your renditions. Okay, renditions or render, three different versions, starting with an object, and you're going to render it in a way that seeks to describe it, not in the realistic terms, okay? So I've got some tulips here, okay? These are real. If I tried to draw them as they were, that'd be a realistic rendering. We don't want that here. I wanna know what your rendition, your object looks like at the end, okay? So you're gonna upload that. Um, it can be color, not color. I'm not telling you what to use. It's all up to you, okay? The only guidelines I'm giving you is I want you to find an object, an everyday object. David loved basketballs, that's why he chose basketballs. I love horses, I chose horses. Find something you love. If it is, um, a video game console, maybe you render it three times, okay? Find something that you like, and I wanna see your renditions. I can't wait to see what you create, my little artists and parents. Please, do it with them. You will find it's very fun, very therapeutic in this time where we're on a uh, shelter order and lockdown to do something artistic with your kids, okay? So, you guys create. I can't wait to see you next time, all right? Love you guys, Mwah.